What is up guys, it's Nelson from Jolly Roger Airsoft and today we're going to be doing our beginner's guide to spray painting a rifle. This is going to go over all the basics you need to know to do any kind of pattern on your rifle. So, to start, why would you camo your rifle? There are two main reasons people uh, spray paint their guns. One, to better blend into the environment. Because when you're wearing these ATACs and multi-cam BDUs and you're out there with all your camo gear and stuff, it kind of defeats the purpose when you have a black rifle that kind of sticks out in the brush. Now it's not horrible, but it does stick out if you're going to be very stealthy. And a lot of special forces do it, and that's why we like to do it, because it makes us look cooler. And that's reason number two. People like to look cool and look unique, and especially with M4s, this is a way to make your gun look unique in a way that nobody else can do quite like you. So that's why we cam our guns to look cool and for the tactical... Uh, enhancement of it, which is a part of it, but mostly it's looking cool part. So, you're going to need a few things to spray paint your rifle. You're going to need spray paint, obviously. You're going to need blue painter's tape to cover up all the things you don't want painted. You are going to need your gun, obviously, and you're going to need any other miscellaneous stuff like leaves, twigs, netting, whatever else you need to apply the pattern you want to apply to your gun. So, if I need like a snakeskin powder, I'm going to have a netting. And there are tutorials out there that will show you what you need for those specific things. Um, I'm going to have my own out there uh, as soon as possible, but I'm going to have a dedicated tutorial for that, but this is just going to be a basic guide. So, you are going to need your spray paint. Let's talk about spray paint. I use this Rust-Oleum camouflage spray paint, and I think it works really well. It works a lot better than the household stuff that you would find, just because it's a palette specifically designed for camouflage. And it makes a big difference. You don't think it does, but it does. So these will work a lot better than household spray paints, but by all means, use any colors you want. If you want to do flaming red and gold, I can't stop you, and I, I don't know. It's your gun. But these are really good for a tactical camouflage look. But really, any green, brown, tan will do for that, as long as it's a flat color. You really want flat, matte colors. So these are really good. They provide a surprising amount of amount of camouflage. Very matte, very flat. And uh, you can find them at Walmart and uh, Home Depot. Those are the two places I found them. I couldn't, I've never found them at Lowe's. So Walmart, Home Depot, where you can get those. Really good. I recommend them for camouflaging. I also use this uh, Krylon Matte Clear Coat, which is you know, it works for what I used it for, which is a final cover over this stuff to kind of give it a little extra protection. Now, the Rust-Oleum Krylon stuff, I'm pretty sure it's mostly the same, and it depends on what location you're in, which one you can get. So don't fret too much about Rust-Oleum versus Krylon. I don't, and it works out fine. So, you have all your materials you need. Let's go over how you're going to do it. The how. First, you're going to want to spray... Uh, you're going to want to paint tape your uh, gun's openings. Anywhere that can read leads to the internals of the gun, you want to put paint tape. So that means the barrel, you're going to want to plug the barrel somehow. You're also going to want to put paint tape in the magwell, as well as your wiring on the front end. If you're using an M4, I highly suggest it. And if you're going to take the handguards off, I highly suggest using uh, taping the wiring just so you don't mess up anything with spray paint, because spray paint can get in the moving parts and stuff if done improperly and make a mess and you don't want to make a mess so you basically you want to seal off anywhere that can lead to the internals uh, because spray paint will get inside the internals and ruin it you do not want the spray paint in the internals and that's really what you're protecting other than that any tape you apply after that is for uh, your own personal looks and whatever suits your own gun so say you wanted like a black front end you would just tape up the front end and spray paint the rest and you'd be good to go It'd look a little awkward, but you could do it. And that's the basic concept. Uh, this can also be applied to stencils for digital camouflage and stuff, but we'll go into that in another episode. Now, once you have everything taped up that needs to be taped up, take it on out, get your uh, painting set up right, and apply your base layer. Now, your base layer is going to be the least prominent of the colors in your final design. My design was very green and brown heavy, as you can see. Um, so the tan doesn't really show up that well, and I did use a lot of green and brown, so I covered up most of the tan. Any tan you see is probably added on in the last stage. But, yeah, so keep that in mind when you're tr looking at your pattern. You're going to want to put your uh, least recognizable color on the bottom, because that's what's not going to show up. 
Um, make sure when you're spray, spray painting, and this applies for all the coats, use good technique, follow the directions on the can, um, stay 12 inches back just to avoid pooling, because the better you do it, the better the finish will look. And most of all, take your time with it, don't rush it, because a lot of the guns we do are expensive and stuff. And so yeah, just take your time, don't rush, don't hurry, there's no rush to uh, get this done. I know it's exciting to want to see the final product, but do not rush it, because the more you rush it, the worse it will look. So, you're going to want to let your base layer dry. You can do two coats of that, probably be fine. Let your base layer dry before you apply your next layers, which are going to be your more stylistic layers. So, this is when you would get your foliage or your uh, netting, and you would lay it on your gun and spray paint your uh, two other colors, or three other colors, or however many other colors you wanted over it or you would apply your sponging technique if you're using sponging technique. This is where you apply your creative touch. So in my first design, I just kind of spray painted in lines and it looked fine. And this is the stage you do that. So you're gonna do that, you can do that in all, you don't have to let it dry completely between the two coats on that. You can do it pretty close together, it's not a big deal because there's not a whole lot of paint on there. So you can do that and then just finish your touches, use all three colors to make it until it looks right for you and just kind of, you know, paint it until you get the look you want. And feel free to just paint it over and start over, because if you don't like what you're doing, just put your base layer back on and start from scratch. It's not a big deal, it's just spray paint, you'll be okay. So, let that dry. After you let your uh, final product dry once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and apply a clear coat. This isn't, you know, mandatory, but I do recommend it just because it'll give your finish a little bit more longevity. And that being said, it is a spray paint finish, so it's not gonna last forever, and your gun will very soon get a nice worn look to it. After you let that clear coat dry, I would say, wait 24 hours at least before handling your gun with any seriousness after you finish the paint job, just so that you make sure that's all nice and uh, dried to the most it can be, and it looks the way you want it to look, because this paint job is on an expensive gun most of the time and you know you want it to look nice and the more you're patient with it the more it'll look nice so yeah that's pretty much it you just remove all the tape after that and that's probably the best part of it removing the tape seeing the final product I mean, it looks great and um yeah that's really it for the uh, spray painting guide this is a basic guide we didn't go into any specifics but i am going to be having specifics on probably the four major techniques sponging snakeskin, uh, what else? Foilage, and there's another one, camo stencils with paint tape. So we'll do those another day. You can do a lot of really neat things. And one last word, when you're doing this, look out on the internet, look at pictures of people, don't look at other tutorials to see what you can do with your uh, paint, because you really want to make it something that you want to look at, and uh, something that'll be tactically efficient. But yeah, look around, find a design you want to try to emulate, and try to emulate that. That's the best advice I can give. So that, that's about it for this episode of Jolly Roger Airsoft. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Stay tuned for more painting tutorials if that's what you want. We're going to have lots more stuff coming down the pipe. We're also going to have videos of action stuff and more filmy stuff. It's going to be an exciting time here at Jolly Roger Airsoft, and we would love to have you on board. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Like, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Peace out. <coughs> oh, I really had to cough. I really had to cough. I'm like, as I'm talking there, at the end, I'm like trying to hold it back because I know I want to cough, but I can't. Because I'm talking to these people on YouTube. <coughs> Good show.